Good evening everyone, today in this video of this channel we will find against the Admas character of our world around us as we do in every video and today I would like to talk about the book on Byzantium yeah, this is not the first uh, book uh, dealing with this topic I discussed on my channel and uh, most likely I will discuss many more in the future but this book by Judith Herring nowadays retired uh, Byzantinist from UK is quite unique. As uh, Mrs. Herring said, this book, uh, the inspiration for this work came from the visit that took place in 2002 AD in her office, that two workmen visited her, repaired something in the office and asked her, seeing that she is professor of Byzantine studies, what what was this Byzantium, and most likely they knew it had something to do with nowadays Turkey. Yeah, they were right, and uh, Mrs. Herring said that she uh, decided to help these two gentlemen, workmen, and she tried to explain them briefly what's Byzantium. And you know, as scholars, we know that uh, to tell something to the laymen what we are working on and explain them and explain to them briefly what we are doing within few sentences, it's not easy and very often, even if we are very good in the discipline we are working on and very knowledgeable and experienced, sometime if uh, by surprise we are asked what we are doing and we are supposed to explain it to the laymen, we can produce not much more than ordinary <coughs> and uh, produce only few sentences that do not make sense together. But Later, Mrs. Herring, Judith Herring, did her homework beautifully and she wrote a book entitled Byzantium. And within uh, many chapters, over 20, she uh, wrote a nice description of many aspects of Byzantine Empire, like fate, like uh, Constantinople, like culture, like territory. Uh, she didn't dedicate a lot to the army, yeah, because her specialty is actually uh, the um, f aristocratic families of Byzantium and female empresses and culture and culture of power but she did very great introduction to Byzantium within these uh, chapters quite numerous but they are written with uh, normal language accessible but not trivial and she tries to cover all, all aspects of this fascinating empire. The only flaws I saw is the reference to the book of Gavin Menezes in which this guy suggested on the <laughs> actually uh, inflated and pseudo evidence that Chinese in 1421 discovered America and uh, Mrs. Judith Herring seemed to like this idea from this what she wrote, maybe I'm wrong, So, but in my opinion such remarks shouldn't be placed within such actually good book, popular but good book. And second, her uh, reference to the Holy Inquisition is typical to uh, persons uh, raised in typical uh, Anglican Anglo-Saxon family, so she repeats the reference to the Black Legion of uh, Holy Inquisition, but okay, these two flows I would eliminate, but the rest of the content is valuable, especially the relations between the Byzantium and Islam and also Byzantium and different uh, nations like Slavic nations, also mentioning the achievements that were completely uh, unique when we compare Byzantium, for instance, to the Western European nations and to the Islamic nations, like translating the holy text, in their case Bible, into national languages, Greek and Slavic languages. It happened for Christianity only with uh, Reformation and Protestantism. Uh, for uh, Muslims, they still need to learn uh, classical Arabic uh, to read their holy book Quran in the original. So, uh, she, wa she uh, proved that in many aspects, like organs, church organs, and uh, also art, for instance, uh, many craftsmen were hired by caliphs to uh, make ornaments for their mosques, from Byzantine workers, uh, skilled, skillful craftsmen were working to make, I would say, flag, 
monumental landmarks of Islamic culture to make them even more beautiful and more shining and to make them this what they are now. And so uh, Byzantine artists were working not only within their country and m Mrs. Uh, Herin mentions it with pride and she describes also a lot about Constantinople, its buildings, about Ravenna, very interesting chapter, and these famous mosaics of Justinian and Theodora, many, many other things. That's why for the beginners, and not only for the beginners, also for people already familiar with Byzantium, this book is useful because it contains nicely grouped facts, nicely written, just to refresh some issues. It's also good for people who are experienced in the Byzantine studies and would like to refresh something, and perfect for beginners. All the best and have a nice evening.